Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of February 19, 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, without a doubt. Big moves happening in the sky now. And a truly important celestial event takes place right out of the gate. We are at the beginning of the week in the dark of the moon. We're building towards Monday's new moon, which is happening in the energy of Pisces. And I feel like in many ways we are wrapping up some very powerful Piscean energy here. What is Piscean energy? It is of oneness, which is very powerful, very essential. It is one of compassion as well, but it can also be one of fantasy. And the thing with fantasies is that they're not necessarily meant to be what we would call real. What's real is often messy. It is uh, something that has to do with acknowledging what is nitty gritty what maybe we don't want to look at. That ultimately determines the complexities, the nuances that root us more fully in an understanding of what truly is, what the reality of the person, place, thing, or situation actually is. Piscean energy necessarily works against this understanding because of how compassionate it is. We're willing to move towards understanding rather than looking at the effect rather than judging an action as right or wrong. Now that, of course, is okay in some context, but if we step back and we think about it, there absolutely are some things that we can say are not right. While there are other things that maybe are not considered right within a given context, historical or cultural, but ultimately are value judgments and may not in and of themselves inherently represent something not being good. And so here we are. In the dark of the moon is when the ancients believed some of the most powerful revelations could be understood. This is the truth that can only be found by going within and getting to something truly essential. But the dark of the moon also means that we are on that precipice of the very first break of the moon, meaning that sliver of a crescent that announces that truly we are now on a new path and in a new beginning. It is this moment of silence, of an inhale that ultimately gives us the reserve, the strength that we need to receive those insights that we know are coming, even if they are not apparent just yet. This can be a very powerful time. Certain occult practices only took place during this particular phase of the moon, where it was that you were working on something that you really didn't want other people to know about, but did represent what you wanted to, in some way, either end on one side of the dark of the moon or grow once it is that we officially have that new moon, but it is still dark. It is what you want to keep secret while well, working on those things is most powerful in how it can contain the energy over the course of the dark of the moon. But we have something really fascinating happening at this time as we begin the week as well. And it has to do with Venus. So over the course of the last month, we've had Venus moving through the sign of Pisces. And this has brought that very dreamy, compassionate, perhaps overly hopeful, fantastical quality to matters of heart, to matters of our appreciation of our own unique beauty and how we choose to celebrate it as well. This is about a love for the oneness, a love for the all that is highlighted here, which can be a beautiful way to use this energy. However, one thing that can happen with Venus in Pisces is that it can sometimes indicate getting so caught up in possibility that we don't really want to see what's actually taking place or we can't accept what the reality of the situation is telling us. Having such high hopes, which is a beautiful thing, that we lose a sense of ourselves. We become what's called ungrounded because we're so caught up in what ultimately could just be a fairy tale. 
but it works the other way as well. Acknowledging disappointment, but maybe not even seeing that very clearly, not seeing that from a balanced perspective. All things that took place had their wisdom, and now here we are with a chance to understand ourselves, the decisions we've made in matters of heart, in matters of love and self-love with an eye towards healing, transition, and moving forward. It happens at the beginning of the week with Venus at the very end of the sign of Pisces, speaking in harmony with Pluto, now at the very end of the sign of Capricorn. This is a harmonious connection that astrologers call a sextile. And sextiles are wonderful energies, actually. They can be even better than trines. Trines are considered the most easy, the most positive energy there is. It's a free flow of energy. However, sextiles is where we're able to recognize things could be better, but we feel a sense of control. We feel like we could take action in support of it, and we've got lots of cosmic support for having things change in a way that we like. And change really is very much at the forefront. It's very much on the agenda with Pluto, the planet of transformation, a planet that also in its own way has to do with truth, the depth, the, the nitty gritty, the what you want to deny, you don't want to accept is there. Can you still find beauty there? That is the question of Venus sextile Pluto. It may not be the fantasy. And I would add in the middle of last week when Venus met Neptune, that fantastical energy was at its peak. It was very high. And it may not be that, but that doesn't mean you can't learn something. That doesn't mean it is less than exactly what it is that you need right now. But this is also an energy of making a choice, making a decision consciously at that. You know, I like to say, if you make your choices consciously, you can't make a wrong choice. And what that means is with awareness, with as much awareness as you have in a given moment, you weigh your options you consider what might be going on, what you do know, what you don't know. And from there, you decide on a course of action or a step that you could take that truly is right for you. You can't make a wrong choice in that situation and within that consideration. Regardless of the outcome, if you know that you did your best, you approached it with personal honesty, well then, you can only hold love for yourself as you make a choice and trust It'll lead you wherever it is that it's meant to, wherever it is that it needs to as well. And so we have here us almost coming out of that very dreamy, hopeful, carried away kind of energy we had in the middle of last week towards something that at least is able to acknowledge what's happening at the core of a given matter. And from there, decide what we want to do. Do we want to work to transform it, to change it? Do we want to cut our losses and go in a different direction? Do we want to amplify what we see as good or work to heal what we see as perhaps not as good? And so this is a chance to see all matters of love and heart from universal love to self-love to, yes, romantic love differently in some way, in a way that empowers us to make choices that create the kind of change we truly desire. And so on Monday, we get to the new moon in the sign of Pisces. Now, there's a difference here. It is Venus that is at the very end of the sign of Pisces as we start the week. The new moon happens at the very beginning of the sign of Pisces. And so I feel like we have this contrast here. Over the course of the last month, Venus has gone on a journey. She's moved through the energy of Pisces, which now culminates with this intensity, this energy that really, in another way of looking at it, can be very sultry. It can reach right into you in a positive way, in a beautiful way at that. We have this energy there. But at the same time, almost simultaneously, we're having an energy of beginnings, of being at the very start of a journey in some ways. Now, this isn't the absolute start that would be zero degrees of Pisces but this is a one degree Pisces kind of energy which means that we're not 
so much brand new, not knowing where we are as we step into a sign. We're understanding, but we also know that we are at the beginning, the beginning of a journey with Piscean energy. It's always a journey of spirit. It's always a journey towards greater oneness and experiencing the love that can be found, the bliss that can be found by appreciating that oneness as we move through life and as we turn that lens towards a greater sense of compassion towards ourselves. Now, something interesting about this new moon is that it is essentially unaspected. Um, it is happening very close in the sky to Saturn. However, Saturn is at the very end of the sign just before Pisces, that is the sign of Aquarius, gearing up to leave the sign of Aquarius very, very soon. I can't believe it. We are just a couple weeks out from that. So yeah, there's going to be a lot to say on that in the weeks ahead as well. But also, this new moon is speaking to the nodes not with great precision, but we can say that a connection is there that is harmonious nonetheless. And so what this suggests is, in many ways, the journey and the understanding that we are beginning now starts much more personally, starts as an inward journey. It starts with understanding that lens of compassion, but also that lens of magic. That is also part of Piscean energy. Can we move through life appreciating that magic is at play? Can we stand back for a moment and consider the wonder of our existence? Regardless of how we conceptualize a, a higher power or the universe in a more mystical sense, there's something very magical about simply existing as a human being that the energy of Pisces reminds us of. It reminds us that we're not just human. We are so much more. We are pure love. We are pure spirit. And ultimately, that spirit that we truly are is a part of everyone and everything. It's not identical to, it's not like, it actually is everyone and everything. The most magical, most beautiful, most fantastical most illuminating part of us is ultimately the part of us that leaves some sense of individuality behind enough to know that that profound connection we have with everyone and everything means that truly none of us is ever alone. This is the energy we have as we start this week. The insights are profound and personal. And then what happens? Well, under the light of the new moon, Venus changes signs, moving into the sign of Aries. Talk about a wake up. I feel like our hearts in an instant are going to wake right up. Now, the way I always understand Venus and Aries is love at first sight. That's how I see this energy. It's that sense of lust or passion or desire or feeling pulled towards another person that can happen quickly, that can happen instantly, propelling us towards them. That sense of love at first sight, does it actually exist? Well, it depends on how you interpret and understand love, what love actually is in a way. Sure, sometimes we look at people and we feel a connection. We look at people, and we feel desire. That is often interpreted as love at first sight. However, even that desire that is evoked in us when we look at another person, its roots are very deep. They are based on so many factors. Our childhood, our emotional states, the love we've received as we've moved through life. Where is it that this person in some way is evoking something very deep based on nonverbal communication or cues that they're sending. Well, all of that becomes highlighted, but in a way that ultimately is unconscious because love at first sight means that you're not thinking about it, right? That's the whole point. You're not thinking about it. You're not intellectualizing it. 
that energy of bliss at first sight um, is a very different thing than just sheer desire. This is going from a water sign into a fire sign. The water of Pisces believes that there's love in the world, love in the universe, and that it is always available like water. It is constantly pouring on us, which is true. Venus in Aries says that love is a wake-up call. Love stirs your soul. Love is something that will have you jumping for joy or jumping hoops and loving the journey. Venus in Pisces says that you can relax. The love that is for you will show up for you. It will arrive in the perfect time in the perfect place, which is true. Venus in Aries says if you want it, you got to go for it. You got to make it happen. You, you got to chase. Or you got to let it be known or you have to put yourself out there in some way. Both approaches have their validity. As Venus moves through all of the signs, all of these approaches have their validity as well. However, right now, well, we're starting Venus in Aries, and I think that that is going to be such a jolt. And yeah, we may see a lot of people around us uh, sort of falling in love, but not it really being love, you know. Venus is also about uh, the fashion styles and statements of beauty that we're celebrating as a collective. And in the sign of Aries, uh, this is about what is bold, what is bright. Uh, we're looking at bright reds, oranges, yellows, big statement moments that are likely to capture our attention when it comes to things like fashion and style that we may be looking at now. Now, we do have another interesting set of energies playing out as well over the course of Tuesday and Wednesday. This has to do with Mercury currently in the sign of Aquarius. This highlights ingenuity, but it also highlights ideas and the value of ideas as well. Now, here's what's so interesting, of course, we know, you know, I've been talking about it. Pluto is about to head into Aquarius, and so we're about to really go into a much more concentrated understanding of Aquarian energy and all that that brings and all that that entails. But having said that, I will link to some of those videos below where I've been talking about Pluto and Aquarius because I think this is huge and massive. Right now it's Mercury. Mercury will move through Aquarius once a year. And when it does, it tends to bring into focus sort of journeys or movements of greater equality, how they're understood. It brings focus to revolutionary ideas as well. And what revolution looks like, what's healthy revolution, maybe what hasn't been at first but then became. Um, and it invites us to consider our lives differently in some way. It invites us to take a step back to remove emotion from a given person, place, thing, or situation and actually look at what it is that has been shown, what has been demonstrated, what has been empirically proven meaning what has been repeated again and again with the same or very similar result. Now this can have to do with our connections with other people, with friendships, with groups, but it can also be more personal than that as well, more individual than that as well. Now, having said that, it is on Tuesday that Mercury will speak in a conversation of tension that astrologers call a square with Uranus. This is fascinating for a few reasons. Uranus is often conceptualized as the higher octave of Mercury. And so you can see they have that connection there. Consider this as well. Uranus is the modern ruling planet of Aquarius. And so it currently is Mercury in the sign of Aquarius as well. So we're being asked to consider new ways, new ideas, in ways that really may take us aback. The ways in which we're thinking about things and just welcoming in a whole other perception may actually surprise us, but maybe exactly what it is that we need. But here's the thing. 
Mercury square Uranus to me pretty much represents information or news uh, showing up, popping up, a synchronistic moment that takes us by surprise, but also shock as well. It can be gossip as well that ends up being very revealing. Now, how much stock we're going to put into what it is we're hearing? Well, that's going to be up to us to start to decipher at this time. But yes, it may be like literally in the news, there is some shocking news. Um, it could be related to science or scientific discovery as well. Having said that, though, it is the following day that Mercury will speak in supreme harmony with Mars. Now, here's also an interesting bit. Mercury is the ruling planet of the sign of Gemini. Mars is in the sign of Gemini right now as well. So you can see here with these different alignments that there's a, a cohesion to them. There's a way in which they are amplified in energies. They become more and more significant in how it is that they connect. And so consider that Mars right now is still in the larger Mars retrograde season. We're not totally out of it just yet. Mars, of course, went retrograde between Halloween and the middle of January. Mars is now direct, but retracing those steps that he took when he was retro. And Mars will be out of shadow in a little over a month to come. So we've got about a month left to start wrapping up these loose ends. And so now here we are with Mercury speaking in supreme harmony with that Mars. I feel like this is going to be sort of an elevated sense of understanding as to what this Mars retrograde season was meant to be for us. Every celestial event, especially the ones that we feel more personally because of the ways in which they might be aspecting our chart, speaking to our personal birth chart, for example, every celestial event is an opportunity. It is an invitation to bring forward new parts of ourselves, to learn something about ourselves, and ultimately the higher desire, right, the the soul's desire that we're not always aware of consciously, I would say rarely aware of in the moment especially, but it is always with the intent of aligning us with greater love and greater wisdom than we knew before. It is always with the intent of helping us to embody greater love and greater wisdom than we did before. However, right now, yeah, the information that comes up first may seem erratic, before it is that we recognize our power within it. And so the erraticness, the gossip or information that seems to come out of nowhere and finds us, even if you are one of the people that feels it's shocking, even if you are one of those people, which may not necessarily be the case at all, who feels as if it's events outside of you coming up out of nowhere that speak to you personally, you will find a way to tap into a sense of your own power and the power of intention to transform things to your advantage in some way. Even if what comes about doesn't really have anything to do with us personally, or maybe it does, either way, we understand our power within the situation and simply by acknowledging our power and the limits of our power, you might just find some peace as well. Now, I will say very often, I think it's part of the human condition, the human experience, that we will encounter things. If we've lived and are living a full life, we will encounter moments or situations where we feel powerless, where we wish we weren't. We may wish that we had more power to affect things in a positive way, but the acknowledgement that we don't is a way in which we do gain power. But I would also say that sometimes it can surprise us that actually there is some power that we hold. There is power that in a very practical way can transform those circumstances where we end up feeling so powerless. In accepting our powerlessness, we actually end up gaining a whole lot of power in the process. 
What I love about this week for us, well, there's so much here. It is a powerful and meaningful astrological moment. I'm going to say the new moon that takes place on Monday. That new moon in the energy of Pisces truly represents newness. It speaks to brand new beginnings and brand new chapters all around. But it also speaks to a new understanding of what our connection to everyone and everything could be, how it is we feel it, how it is that we know it. It speaks to true healing and understanding that life itself is miraculous. It is magic. And the thing about magic, when it is that you're willing to see it, you'll realize that it truly is everywhere permeating everyone and everything. That includes you as well. Thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it means so much. I'm truly so grateful for it. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week for each and every sign for as low as just $3 a month with choose your membership rate. Higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the Superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University presents some truly incredible, memorable classes that are coming up this March and you have less than two weeks left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, an unheard of rate to learn from this caliber of astrologer and we have got some big dogs and one of perhaps the biggest dogs, living legends in astrology today the one and only Stephen Forrest as part of the March 2023 speaker series at Synchronicity University. Now, Stephen Forrest, the famous, right, the legend, he has been so kind as to offer Synchronicity University students access to one of his previous talks. And so this is called Grace in Debility. It is looking at planets in debility and how to look at it differently, how to interpret it differently from that very soul, compassionate, knowledgeable, insightful perspective that only Stephen Forrest could bring. And so we're going to have a watch party. We're going to kick off the March 2023 speaker series with his class. I'm going to host that watch party. So we're going to have a lot of fun together, learn from Stephen together through this video presentation. So I hope that you will join us just for that class. I think it's absolutely worth it. But look, if you sign up for the speaker series this March, well, what also happens is you get access to other classes as well that I think you'll absolutely love. And so let's talk about some of these classes, some of these people you've seen on my channel as of recently. Linda Bird. Wow. Linda really made such a strong impression on me when it was that we had our interview and she really helped me to connect with that belief, that spirit, that conviction that every movement of the planets, every aspect to our chart is an invitation to love, to maximize love, to become more of love than we were before. And so I think she is going to be somebody that you really don't want to miss in terms of her philosophical approach, but really, I think she'll have you seeing your chart very differently than you have before. Omari Martin is coming to Synchronicity University. I love Omari. He's been on the circuit of conferences for so many years, and now I'm getting to know him better because, of course, I'm on the faculty at Kepler College. He's one of the big dogs at Kepler College. So I love that he's coming to Synchronicity University. He'll be teaching on vocational astrology looking at career, work, and money 
in the astrology chart. I hope you absolutely love that class as well. Maria de Simone will be joining us to share some of her most favorite predictive techniques. She shares some in the interview that I did with her, and that was really insightful as well, stuff that you can apply right away to your chart. Well, it is going to be Maria that is going to bring a class so that you actually can look at prediction and how to go about it, how to approach it in the way that she teaches in this very loyal fan base that she has. She's really letting you know what a pro she is. And so check out that interview, but also join us for her class as well to sort of up your predictive skills. And then we're going to have me, Nadia Shaw. I am going to be there uh, as part of the March 2023 speaker series. It's been about a year since I taught, almost a year since I've taught at Synchronicity University. I'm glad to be back. And look, I've been talking so much about Pluto in Aquarius that I haven't really talked enough about the fact that there's something else really big coming up later this decade, which is Neptune in Aries. You know, I'm all about that big picture perspective, right? I love to look at these larger trends and how they speak to historical forces and how we grow as a collective, but also how we experience these big collective energies more personally as well. And so this is an early look at Neptune in the sign of Aries. That is coming up very soon. So this is the wonderful stellar approach that we are going to have here at Synchronicity University with the March 2023 speaker series. You've got like just a little over a week left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, an unheard of rate to learn from even one of these astrologers, but you get a five class pack. It really is incredible. So I hope that you'll join us. You can click on the description below the link in the description and you'll learn a lot more about these classes and sign up as well at synchronicityuniversity.com. Synchronicity University presents my friend, Dr. Armand Diaz. Armand is back and he is teaching a five part course, everything you wanted to know about prediction. Here we go. We're coming back to prediction. I think a big part of this is because Neptune is moving into the later degrees of Pisces. We're having a new moon in Pisces. So it really is the perfect time during Pisces season to actually be engaging the topic of prediction at that. And Armand, I mean, really, he is uh, just brilliant. He's intellectual. He's nerdy like me. Um, but he's also somebody who really knows his stuff. Again, a very respected figure in the astrology community. And Armand has these five classes where he's going to take you through so many different techniques, so many different ways to understand prediction that you can start applying it right away. And how do you apply it? I know for me, what I like to do is I like to look at what happened in the past. So what took place that really stood out and what was happening in my chart at the time? That tells you something about how that energy could be experienced. And so as you're learning these new techniques and you apply them, you can apply them to charts of the past, to events that you went through in your life. But also, of course, looking up ahead, seeing what could be coming for you, that is a part of our tradition as astrologers. And as much as we've moved in a direction of honoring choice of honoring free will, which is wonderful. Absolutely, we can engage these energies consciously and thereby direct the energy in healthy ways. At the same time, prediction is a part of our tradition up until very recently in human history. So Armand is a wonderful person to teach you about all of this practical techniques, everything you needed to know about prediction in five easy steps, five easy classes. Uh, how he articulates it, that's the way you want to go. But yes, this is going to be so insightful, so wonderful. You can learn a lot more and sign up now at synchronicityuniversity.com. You've got just a week left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, an unheard of rate to learn from Armand Diaz and for a five-week class at that. So yes, learn more. Sign up now. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University presents my dear friend and one of our most popular teachers, Michael Barwick. 
the wonderful, the brilliant, the always prepared Michael Barwick is coming back to Synchronicity University. He's had some of our most popular classes before, so this will be his third course that he'll be teaching with us. And this is all on love, astrology of relationships. That's the other thing that people come to astrology for, to understand where they are in love and why and how they feel about it. When are they going to meet somebody? Why did that relationship end? What's going on within a relationship? How does that person really feel about me? All of that, right? Astrology is one of those things that many people go to to find answers to these questions. And it is Michael Barwick who's going to teach you the techniques in really practical ways, as he does, so that you can answer these very questions for yourself in your own chart, but also for the other people that your astrological practice might serve. So whether it is that you are a newbie, you are brand new, or whether it is that you've already been reading charts for a while, perhaps a good long while, it is this very energy that invites you to consider how the planets and what's happening there are speaking to what's happening in love and your connection with others as well. You'll be able to understand all kinds of relationships with this, but of course, this is focused more on romantic relationships, but yes, you can use these techniques in all kinds of ways to understand your connection with bosses, to understand your connections with your coworkers, with your siblings, with your parents, and so much more. So Michael Barwick, coming back to Synchronicity University, one of our most popular teachers. You've got just over a week left to choose your tuition rate, as low as just $5 a class, an unheard of rate for this caliber of astrologer and astrological education. There's so much to know about astrology of relationships. Michael is going to teach you a whole lot. You can learn more and sign up now at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm always so very grateful for it. I want to send a big shout out, a big thank you to all the friends and fans that I met in Cairo up until the very last night that I was there I was getting uh, messages that said I want to meet you are you around um, I tried to meet as many people as possible and I know that there are at least two people who didn't get a chance to meet me and I'm very sorry about that but you know I love meeting friends and fans when I'm traveling and making those connections and it's just so much love and so thank you to the incredible crew that I met out in Cairo I will always carry that love with me very closely forever. I have no doubt about that. And I learned a whole lot about myself, uh, about the world, and a lot that I think I'll be sharing in the weeks and months and even years ahead as well. And so now I am in Tunisia, in Tunis, their capital. And if you are around, I'm here for a few more days, and I'll be leaving in the middle of the week. And where I go, well, I will let you know once I get there. But for now, yes, Tunisia is where I am. I'm still in North Africa. And if you're around, yes, let's connect. But please reach out as soon as possible. I'm always down for a hug and a latte. And here in, um, uh, here in Tunis, it's all about the shisha also, right? You got to get with the shisha here. Uh, it's quite interesting. I am loving it here. I'm loving the culture and the people. It is such a peaceful place. It is such a, a place of, I mean, it feels like Montreal, I got to tell you. As soon as I arrived, I was like, oh my God, I'm in Montreal. Um, everybody's speaking French. Everybody looks like the way they look in Montreal. Um, that sense of just the way I feel when I'm home is how it feels here. So, it's a lovely place. I've already met some incredible people and I'm always down for meeting more. So reach out, use the contact form on my website and we will make a connection happen in perfect time. I do want to quickly share that I will be transiting through Germany, Frankfurt, and I'm actually going to be there for a good while, like one day, basically one night, one day. And so if it is that you are in the Frankfurt area and you would like to meet and you would like to have a hug, reach out using the contact form on my website and we'll see what we can do. If it's meant to happen, it will. Thank you. I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for your love. I'm grateful for your trust. I'm grateful for you walking this journey with me as well. 
Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. Welcome to the exciting rebirth of Superstar featuring Choose Your Membership Rate as low as just $3 a month. At Superstar, you get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, class passes for Synchronicity University, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the Superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there.